The click and reveal interaction is probably the most common uh, type of interaction you see in e-learning, especially in, in Storyline. And most people are building something similar to this particular um, section, where if I select cryptozoology, I will see the definition. And it's usually going to be a state change, or in this case, actually, it's going to a layer. And you'll see how that happens. Uh, but many times people want something a little bit more than that, than just a simple click and reveal. And we get a lot of requests about uh, creating a flip card type interaction. The most common one we see people do is using the same type of interaction where you're clicking on an object or selecting an object, and it's revealing a layer. But on that layer, there's a swivel uh, animation. So it looks a little bit like this. Uh, what we're going to talk about building is where it doesn't swivel so many times, but actually flips just one time and gives you that effect of a flip card uh, that you might see like an Arise flip card interaction. So let's show you how we've done this. So here's the story that we're working with. And you'll see uh, the one that we built that has the swivel basically just has a trigger to show the layer, a systemus, which I didn't know this word before I built this. And it has a swivel animation you can see here and here. Uh, the one that we're going to be building that's a little bit different, uh, I'll show you what the completed one looks like. If I come to the lugubrious, uh, I should have chosen easier words to say, you'll see that we have still added here a swivel animation. But what we've done instead is we've created actually a group. And down here in the group, there are two objects. There's the actual text shape, but there's an invisible square. And in, in, internally at UConn, uh, Ming on our team has called this the Erox, which is square spelled backwards. So we call it Erox or Erox or whatever you want to call it. But it's an invisible square. And so the idea is we're actually swiveling the group. But you'll notice on the timing here that the item is um, that has the text on it doesn't appear until halfway through that animation. And therefore, you get the illusion that it's only flipping one time. In reality, it's flipping, swiveling multiple times. But since this item doesn't show up till halfway through the animation, it only shows it flipping one time. And then we also have a copy of the item here disappearing so that it gives that effect that we were looking for. So let's build that one on the uh, cryptozoology item. I've already added the invisible square. Here it is. I'll turn it on. You really can't see it, but there, there it is. And then I've also added the uh, cryptology, cryptozoology, the same item here. I'm just going to have it disappear at a certain time. And so you'll see I've got these two items selected, and I'm going to multi-select them and uh, group them. And I'll just use Control-G to group. And now they're a grouped item, and I can add the swivel animation to that group. So here comes the swivel. Always have trouble finding swivel. There it is. And so you'll see how the animation is going to work. But now I'm going to expand this group, and I'm going to take this part of it and slide it about halfway through that animation. So I can come back here and see how long the animation was. It's actually about two-thirds of the animation. So the animation is set at 0.75, and I'm actually having this item appear at 0.5. And at the same time, I'm having this item go away. So what does that create for us? Well, when I play this now, you'll see that when I select this, it's showing that layer. The entire group will start swiveling, but the first rotation of the swivel is just the invisible square. You don't see the second rotate, the actual content appear to the second rotation, and that's what it looks like. A nice card flip animation. And that's all you have to do.